Woe to the teachers of the law, the day of the saints is here. Woe to the Welcome to God the News Network, where the saints the are rising, God. where we are here to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Are you a saint? How do you find out? By listening to God News Network, we want to thank all of you for tuning in each and every week, loyal and faithful as we're growing around the world. We couldn't do it without him and you. So please keep up that loyalty and spread the good word so that we can share with you all the stuff that's related to the saints rising. (laughs) Well, with me is my partner in this whole battle against what's going on around the world. And that is my brother, Albert Delgado from South Carolina. How are you doing? Rick, again, another good day out here. Boy, what a... What a great day. We, I spent the morning with uh, my family and uh, glorifying God. You know, uh, it's amazing that we celebrate this day and uh, his resurrection day, but we forget it's our resurrection too. Because when he died, we died. And when he resurrected, we as believers resurrected with him. So it is great. It is a great day. <laughs> It is, brother. It is a resurrection day, and it's the best day that's ever been in the universe as far as what Christ did for us on the cross. And there's people all around the world today that celebrated this beautiful, gorgeous, glorified day in Christ Jesus. Unfortunately, not everybody feels like we do about this day. And we have people out there who want to go against uh, love who want to go against peace, who want to go against kindness, who want to go against gentleness, who want to go against something that would be brotherly and caring and kind. Mm -hmm. And let's just take everything out of it. Let's take all the politics out of it. Let's take all of religion out of it and ask ourselves basic humanity questions. Let's deal with it from a perspective of love. Just love. What's common sense love and kindness towards your fellow man? You know, there we, we, are, we hold up all the families that were involved in the situation with Pakistan today. And if you are new and you haven't picked up on any of the news in Pakistan today, unfortunately, we've had a, a disastrous situation that occurred over there. And... I want to give you a little update here. This is on USA Today. A bomb blast in a park filled with Christian families celebrating Resurrection Day in the Pakistani city of Lahore. Killed 65 people and wounded hundreds more. A government official said Sunday. Now, we know right now there's 91 people that are, uh, I've got an update about an hour ago. There's 91 people who are injured. Uh, Many of them are in critical condition right now, so we need to lift them up uh, in prayer as well. Hmm. A breakaway Taliban faction told the Associated Press that it was responsible for the explosion. Forgive me if I mispronounce these names, but I'm going to do the best I can. (laughs) Asanullah Hassan said the militant group Jamaat ul Arar deliberately targeted Christians and warned of more attacks to follow. So it's not only what happened today, I'm on a sidebar now, but it's more to follow. Back in the story. Salman Rafiq, a health advisor to the chief minister, Punjab province, said many of those injured in the critical condition and warned that death toll could climb. Zaim Qadri, A spokesman for the chief minister said at least 300 were injured in addition to those killed. The explosion took place near the children's rides in Gulshan-e-Kabal Park. Local police chief Hader Ashraf said, he said the explosion appeared to have been a suicide bombing, but the investigation is ongoing. Most of the dead and injured are women, 
and children. Hmm. Mustansar Faraz, the police superintendent of the area, told Reuters today. Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif expressed grief and shock over the bombing and Pujab Chief Minister Shabaz Sharif declared three days of mourning starting Monday. According to the International News, Karachi-based newspaper, the Prime Minister on Sunday held a meeting to assess the security situation in Lahore, the government said. Pakistani's Army Chief General Rahil Sharif also convened an emergency meeting of the country's intelligence agencies to begin to track down those responsible for the attacks, said Army Spokesman General Asim Salim Bajwa. In a statement, the Vatican pipes in and says, casts a shadow of sadness and anguish on the feast of Easter. Once again, cowardly, murderous hatred rages on the most defenseless. In Washington, the White House condemned the bombing. This cowardly act in what has long been a scenic and placid park has killed dozens of innocent civilians and left scores injured. National Security Council spokesman Ned Price said, we send our deepest condolences to the loved ones of those killed, just as our thoughts and prayers are out with the families and many injured in the explosion. The United States stands with the people of Pakistan at this difficult hour. Ashraf said, the park was manned by police and private security guards. We are in a warlike situation and there is always a general threat, but no specific threat alert was received for this place, he said. There's going to be other footage and broadcasts as this goes on. I'm on sidebar. I'm away from the story. But on a beautiful day where Christ came and set us all free who wants to accept him. Hmm. They decide to take target on innocent children and women when they were celebrating this freedom that Christ brought. Hmm. You know, uh, uh, Rick, uh, this reminds me of what the Bible says, uh, that it says that in the last days, people's hearts will grow cold. And uh, we're seeing this throughout the whole world. I mean, we're seeing this there. We saw in the, in the United States, we saw men in uh, this year in Europe uh, in festivals, uh, men handling women and, and uh, doing all kinds of radical things to women. Uh, we saw that in India in a lot of instances uh, of uh, people raping women, gangs raping women. I mean, uh, I mean this, is, this is the type of scenario of, of the apocalypse. Uh, can you imagine, can you imagine, Rick, uh, these people weren't proclaiming Christ really to the world. They were just celebrating it. Can you imagine when, just like what we talked about last week about the two prophets, can you imagine in the time of the prophets when those two prophets come out and preach the gospel in that region? If, if, that, if, if these people had so much hatred towards these people that they weren't really doing nothing, imagine the hatred when those two prophets come up and start preaching the gospel to the world. What kind of hatred they're going to have against them? I mean, it's going to be uh, incredible. You know, it's going to be incredible. And, and we're seeing that now. I think that the time, it's really at hand. I do uh, we there's I, I I I don't think there's any time in the world where the whole world has been in in this kind of a, a rumors of wars and and hatred and and uh, I mean it's it's really disgusting. I mean even even our own people. Uh, you hear uh, the rhetoric that comes out of the uh, sometimes of our politicians and and uh, and you hear. Uh, the things that they're doing, and 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 and, uh, and sometimes even bringing on Christianity, like as Christianity supporting their their robbery of, of uh, you know, it reminds me so much of the other uh, studies that we did that uh, the leaders were robbing the, uh, you know, robbing the the, uh, the the 
bank of, of, of you know, of Israel, of, of their food and all that. And people were starving, you know, and God had to send some people to get them, get them straight, you know. And it's the same thing here. You know, we're looking at the leaders throughout the whole world. Uh, uh, people are revolting against their leaders because they're, they're stealing the people's money. And, and, and this people killing is, is a hatred all over the world, a hatred all over the world. And it has to be the time of Jesus coming. It has to be because of everything that's going on, because of the religiousness, because of the people that, that are hating and hating and, uh, and, and doing all these things. I mean, boy, I, you know, I can't imagine another time, even, you know, when our parents, were like, when our parents were growing up and, and adults and all that, who would have thought that they would have, uh, you know that there were been places around the world where were whole gangs of 50 60 men going out in celebrations and raping women it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense if, unless you understand that the ends of times are going to be days like that hmm. you know they're going to be days like that you bring up a lot of very good points albert and Going to the verse that you're talking about where the hearts of men grow cold, we're going to go to Matthew 24. And this is one of the most famous prophecy chapters of all time. And Jesus basically went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And they wanted to show him this beautiful temple. Like, come on, you got to see this, man. This is awesome, right. Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign? of thy coming and of the end of the world. So what are they asking for? When will these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no man deceive you. So he knows that it's going to be someone who might be able to deceive them. So he says to them, Take heed that no one will deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Do a Google search on men who claim to be the Christ. Mm-hmm. You're going to find all kinds. Have you ever seen that before, Albert? Yeah. Oh, I, I, in fact, my name is Alberto Delgado, okay? When I lived in South Florida... There is a religious man over there that his name is Alberto Delgado, and he claims to be Christ. <laughs> he claims to be Christ incarnated. That's bad branding for your name now, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it's bad. And, and not just that he claims to be Christ, it's that some of the teachings that he has are truthful teachings, but mixed up with nonsense. So... He, he, if you hear him, is is sad because he teaches a little bit of grace, but he goes on the wild side, and uh, I mean, it's incredible. And this guy has a big church. I mean, a big church, a mega church in Miami. Many people follow him. He's he's out in the Spanish media and everything. And it's, a, it's, a, it's incredible. I mean, the things that he says are truly incredible. And people follow this. People follow this. Yeah, I think I found him here. He's uh, Dr. Albert, Alberto Delgado. Yeah. Um, assistant professor of mathematics. No, that's not. No, it. no, no, no. Yeah, different guy. Okay. Uh, it's, in, it's in Miami. And uh, put their uh, pastor... Alberto Delgado. Our pastor is anything is possible you can believe. Doctor, founder of a senior pastor of Alpha and Omega Church. That's it. Okay. Alpha and Omega Church. Yeah, there he is. Claiming to be the... There he is. There he is. He claims to be Christ, huh? 
Yes, he does. And he and he doesn't hide it. He doesn't wow. hide it. He says that he is the incarnated Christ. He's on the Christian network reaching 52 million viewers and his local yeah. radio program is heard by thousands in Miami and across the United States. Dr. Delgado is not an author. Interesting. Yeah. Dive into that a little bit deeper. But going on with Matthew 24, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Do we hear that? All the time. They're all, all the over time. the place. Yep. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall arise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. What's going on right now? All of that. All that. Been in it, right? In fact, yeah. In fact, uh, uh, me and you were talking uh, a couple of days ago, uh, Rick, in reference to all those earthquakes that uh, the news has. Uh, you know, they, the news is predicting, the U.S. government is predicting earthquakes, let's see, in California. They're predicting uh, a major earthquake uh, in that fault that you were saying through the center of the United States. What was the name of that fault? New Madrid. Mm-hmm. New, New Madrid fault. They're predict, uh, predicting uh, earthquakes uh, in the East Coast, believe it or not, over here in South Carolina, off of, the, uh, off of Charleston, all that area there. There's a fault there. They're predicting earthquakes in New York in that area over there. They're predicting uh, the big uh, 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 volcano, half of the volcano in the Canary Islands dropping down to the ocean and, and, um, and carrying an 800-foot tidal wave going at hundreds of miles an hour towards the United States. Mm-hmm. I mean, and all these things, they, they're saying that they're past due, that they're past due. So it's not that they're saying that it's not going to happen or it's going to happen hundreds of years from now. They're saying that all those things could actually happen in our lifetime. Hmm. So uh, it's very interesting that all this is coming at once. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting uh, that all these things happen. Yeah. Well, and you know, there's certain locations that seem to be hitting more than others and what you're talking about is if you i don't know if you've ever heard of the ring of fire Mm -hmm. okay there's a bunch of earthquakes following the ring of fire up mexico around the west side of the united states the big one they're talking about on the northwest side is one that occurs approximately every 300 years and then uh absolutely has a potential of breaking the earth over there And then there's also in the middle part of the United States, you can see a bunch of them there as well. Um, Let me see here. Let's pick up a couple of them. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Look over here. You'll see a bunch of them in Oklahoma. Yeah. There's a, there's a, uh, a 2.5. Here's one in Savannah, Georgia. Is that right? Hmm. Yeah. Kind of weird. Um, well, that might be the same one. The one in Savannah might be the same one that runs to Charleston because all that is, is a pretty big line there. Mm-hmm. So it might be the same one. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, if you look around the world, they've got this laid out like a flat kind of map here. You can kind of see there's, there's a big one over here. Mm. Um, that's located in Dury's Albania. Mm. Um, that looked like a 4.4. I've got another one here that's a 4.4 in Indio Island. There's a 4.4. There's a 4.9 over in San Francisco. There's a bunch of them all over the world. But yeah. continuing on, on those, on those pestilence, famines, and earthquakes, it says in verse 8, Matthew 24, all these are the beginning of sorrows. That's just the beginning. Then... So he uses the word then right after the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. That's what's next. Mm -hmm. And what happened today? They're being brought up to be afflicted. They're being brought up to be killed. And they were killed specifically for the fact that they were worshiping Christ. Mm -hmm. They were were celebrating the risen Christ. They Mm -hmm. were targeted for that specific reason and it says to be afflicted and shall kill you 
and ye mm-hmm. shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Mm-hmm. So that's what's right after all these beginning of sorrows. Then you shall be hated for of, of all nations for my name's sake. Even in our own country, it seems like we're the ones that don't have any freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. If we speak freely, we are hate speak. If everybody yeah. else speaks hate against us, it's okay, and they are not held accountable for it, hmm. even in our own country. And then shall be many offended, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Hmm. So there is the time sequence. We're going to be delivered up, afflicted, and killed, things, and we're going to be hated, and then many offended. And shall betray one another. Oh, over there is him. He's a Christian. Over there is him. He's a Christian. Just like they did with Peter before the cock, the cock crowed three times. The rooster crowed. They, they're, you're with Christ. Blah, 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 blah. You're with Christ. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. And Peter kept saying no until finally he heard the cock crow. And then he was like, oh, man, what have I done? And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. many. And that's occurring right now. All that that you have said, uh, Rick. Is really occurring right now. There is a lot of false prophets out there, and they're deceiving a lot of people. I agree with you. Brother. Uh, That's exactly you what's know? going on. That's it's, exactly. It's amazing, you know. And 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 again, you know, uh, you can you imagine those those two witnesses when they start preaching the gospel <laughs> up there, talking about offending? Oh they're man, they're going to offend the whole world. And, they, and the whole world can do nothing for three nothing. and a half years. Nothing. Mm-hmm. And because iniquity shall abound, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. There it is. So the love for others, we're going to grow cold. You're not really going to love each other. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. This is, I've always found this is a very interesting verse. What does it mean, endure unto the end? It's endure in your faith towards Christ. It's endure in your faith. Not physically, I've got to endure all this stuff. It's the endurance of your faith. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Now, that's th- those 14 and 12 are very interesting. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to many nations. I believe there that it's just not just reference to, it's that reference is not just to us, but that's a reference to, to the two They're going to be preaching all over the world. And, and if you look at, a, a, at, a, a, at 12, the iniquity shall abound. Now, when does iniquity abound? What is another name for iniquity? It's sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when does iniquity abound and where does the, the love of many go cold? And that law. is a statement of the law. Yeah, under the law. Those are people that are under the law, just like the Muslims. The Muslims have a uh, steroid uh, uh, <laughs> made up uh, 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 law to themselves that they themselves can even, they can even keep it. They can even keep their laws. They adjust their laws. So they will be able to keep it. That reminds me also of the religion of Christianity, adjusting laws so we could keep them, you see? And, and when you do that, what happens is that you go cold because you realize that in keeping, there is no love in keeping laws. Hmm. There is no love. And you're trying to compete with other people as to your righteousness. Right. So the love of many will grow cold. It will, it will grow cold. Iniquity is going to grow. Why? Because of the law. 
And, 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 and love is going to grow cold because of the law too, because people are instead of following the new covenant law, they're trying to do their own works and try to please God by their own law. And, and that's a very good place to be frustrated because I tell you that there's nobody, no matter whether you're a Muslim or you're a Christian, that you're, gonna, you're not going to find frustration when you find at the end of the tunnel that you were not able to keep the laws. You're going to be frustrated. And either you're going to turn to Christ and realize his love for you, or you're going to turn into, into hatred and into frustration. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. When we go on to Matthew here, we're going on to the next one. And this was kind of a difficult study here on this one. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now, the land of Judea is the exact area that Palestine wants to make their state. What I see happening there, and it's going to be bartered. There's going to be a barter for that. And you'll get to, you know, Israel will get to build their temple in place of giving them that land. They're ready to go. They've got all the artifacts. Everything's ready. It's already prepared. They're just waiting for the approval to build it. And at one point when Clinton was president, they had a, a secret meeting about it. And one of the things that came out of that meeting was that they could do a shared arrangement on the, the Temple Mount. That was actually spoken in the meeting. What was interesting about that meeting when they were speaking about the shared temple arrangement there is that there is room for the temple. And you, there's room for the Holy of Holies in the inner court, but the outer court, not quite enough room. So if you go to Revelation, that's when John was told, don't measure the outer court hmm. on the third temple because it has to be trampled on by Gentiles for 42 months. That's three and a half years. Hmm. It's the same time that the two witnesses are here. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? That's, that's, that's really incredible. And, uh, I mean, everything is, is shaping up to this time. I mean, even the uh, Muslims with their, with their, uh, uh, their Messiah, you know, they talk about Messiah, a Muslim, the Muslim Messiah coming in too. And all this, all this right here is, is about the same time, you know, because the, the Bible talks about, uh, you know, about uh, the uh, Antichrist coming into the temple and uh, and doing his, his 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 whatever nobody really knows what it is, but doing his desecration in the temple, you know. And uh, boy, this is this is. I'll tell you, Rick. I, I mean, at sometimes it's scary, but at sometimes it's it's exciting because you're seeing things develop. It's like. You know, it's like sitting down and reading a uh, a, a a a booklet, a a uh, a novel, or something like that, and, and and closing your eyes, you know, visualizing everything coming into color, and seeing all those characters play out the role, and uh, and you're just you're just observing all this, and you're going, man, I'm in, <laughs> you know, I'm in the middle of, of seeing this whole this this whole play out, you know, this whole deal play out, you know, I mean, it's exciting. I, I, I'll tell you, can you imagine if, 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 if right in the near future, uh, the two prophets come into scene and you hear about it. I mean, that will be such an exciting, I, I will think I, I will, I will, I will get an airplane and fly to Israel just to meet him, you know? <laughs> I mean, it is exciting times, exciting times. It is not really a time to be fearful because we are God's people. And it's, it's, it's exciting when you're seeing all this develop, it, you know, you're, and, and you're looking at it and, and you have read the Bible and, and understand that we're going to be, we're going to be true. We're going to be 
the it people, you know, at the end, you know, I mean, it's, it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. And it says, then let them in Judea flee into the mountains. There's mountains all around uh, the West Bank. And that was the land of Judea on the old biblical maps. Mm-hmm. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to his clothes. And woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be and except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake which is us those days shall be shortened then if any man shall say unto you lo here is christ or there there he is believe it not for there shall arise false christ and false prophets and show great signs wonders and Miracles and so much that if it were possible, they shall even deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Mm. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, there's not going to be any question. You're going to know that's him. Mm. Daddy's here. He's ready to get me. I am ready for wherever. So ever the carcass is there will the angels be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all, all the tribes of the earth mourn Mm. they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory and he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other now learn a parable of the fig, fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves ye know that summer is nigh so likewise ye when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. We are in the generation where we're seeing all these things. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. generation shall not pass till we see it all. For as in the days were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be the coming of the son of man be. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken. The other left two women shall be grinding in the mill. One shall be taken. The other left watch. Therefore, ye know not what hour your Lord does come. Let me make a, a little comment. It's it's so uh, it's so interesting that they put Noah in the flood. There, you know, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. The Bible says so. And those two prophets are gonna be teachers, just like Noah mm-hmm. of the gospel. That's right. And. Uh, and if you see what's going on, the love faded. Mm-hmm. Many false prophets. Many people claiming that they're Christ. Mm-hmm. I could just see all that happening during the time of Noah. And Noah telling them what the gospel was and telling them who God was. And, and, and the plan of salvation, you know, according to the gospel. So all of this is, is reoccurring again. It's reoccurring again. And it's, it seems like it's a reoccurrence every, uh, every, every uh, so many years, immense, uh, immense life, there's a peak of immense righteousness. I mean, you saw that through Noah. 
we saw that through the Tower of Babel. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it, it's all based on the same thing. The Tower of Babel, it was based also in immense efforts by doing this tower, reaching the glory of God by their own efforts. Right. And, uh, and so right now, you, we will see the same thing now. We're going to see now religion, uh, where, 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 whichever you want to call it. It could be, uh, you know, even the Christian religion. It could be uh, these people that want to <laughs> that want to kill us. <laughs> it could be uh, uh, the uh, I mean, you name them. There's just so many religions in the world that you could name them, and they're all effort religions. Every so, one of them, all of them are. All of them. They're all effort religions, and what's going to happen is that I mean, I don't know how many religions in the world, but there's hundreds of religions in the world. Can you imagine when these two prophets come out and say that their efforts are worthless and that they're, they have come in the name of God and oh. God is telling them that their efforts are worthless? I'll tell you, there's going to be an outroar in the world that nobody has seen. Because probably about 90% of the world is into this effort. They're into this for effort. And, and that's going to be, that's going to be, I mean, they're going to want his head. Oh, yeah. want his head. And, and, and that's what they're going to try for years. So, uh, I mean, we're looking right now at the situation that mimics the times of Noah. I mean, it mimics the times of Noah. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, and here's another thing. When we look at around the world, what's really happening, we know that we're in those times. And our spirit, you know, our spirit agrees that we are. I mean, I, I could, you know, where's Jesus at? You know, mm-hmm. I, I um, you know, different people have different reasons for saying that they believe in pre-trib rapture, post-trib rapture, different things like that. One of the things that gets me to believe in post-trib rapture is if we go, let's go to the Bible here, and we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. We're going to go to chapter 15, and we're going to go to verse 51. It's kind of interesting. It says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment of the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. What does that say? The last trumpet, yeah. Not the first one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not the sixth one. It's the last one. At the last trump. So if we go to Revelation, um, if we look at, the trumpets in Revelation, I think it's what, like seven? Is that right? Um, those are the seals. Hold on here. So we take a look at this and we look at um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is the other one I wanted to go to. Yeah, this is it. We're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Let me get to the New King James. I think it's going to be a little easier to follow. All right. For you know what commandments we gave you to the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual morality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel and not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who not know that one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. For God did not, I'm just going to continue down until we get to that area here. Just Let me go find it here. 13, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. That means 
who have passed away before you, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. So if you are sorrowing for those who have fallen asleep, then you're the same as those who have no hope because you're not recognizing that they are with God. For if we mm-hmm. believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Now, what did that say? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him mm-hmm. those who sleep, not raise them out of the ground. Mm-hmm. He's coming back with them. So they're coming with him. And a lot of people think it's, okay, well, I'm going to raise him out of the ground. Well, let's let's just read on here. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord by no means will precede those who are asleep. Why? Because he's bringing them with him. Yeah. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. Did you ever do a study on this word dead in Christ? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The people who are dead and are buried in the ground that are going to be risen are going to be the ones who are going to be judged. It's not going to be the saints. (laughs) Thank you. I can't believe you nailed that. I've never heard anybody else besides me. Even I can't even get some of the pastor friends that you and I both know. Don't agree with me on that. But you just did. Praise God. That's what I studied and came out with as well, Albert. Yeah. And, and, uh, and not just that, the people who are left or right uh, alive at that time, uh, we talked about this once before that the angels will come and they're swift to the, to, to the, uh, to the kernels of, of wheat. And they're going to be dividing the chaff the, from the wheat. The, the chaff from the wheat. And again, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 we're going to be divided for salvation and they're going to be divided for condemnation. Yes. So then, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Them in the clouds are not the same ones as the dead in Christ. Because them in the clouds are the ones Jesus is going to bring with him. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the word... Behold, the Lord comes with a thousand saints, isn't it? There is... Uh, a, a man can't 10,000 by 10,000 or something like that in Revelation. Yeah. Right. yeah. And thus we shall always be with the Lord there. Comfort one another with these words. Comfort them with these words. So all you families, kind of bringing this back around to the families that suffered today, in um, our hearts go out to you guys. Our hearts go out to you guys. When I read that story today, I just – kind of come unglued to be honest with you because this is the day the Lord has made it is for us to rejoice and be glad in it so even those who were murdered today those who were taken today rejoice because they are with Christ today they now are with him they're coming back with him in the clouds so let us comfort you letting you know that you have hope you're not like those without hope who feel they have to fight everybody and I'm going to reach out to them to people of Islam, because I know that not all people in Islam want to kill, want to destroy. I just heard someone on the news the other day calling for Muslims to be at peace. And it was, it was interesting because I don't hear that very often. But I also want to let you know that the Quran has very specific verses and I don't want to get into too many of them here, but if, if you go to Quran 2, 191 through 193, Quran 2, 244, Quran 2, 216, Quran 356, Quran 3, 151, Quran 474, 476, 489, 495, 4104, 533, 812, 815, 839, 857, 867, 859, 60. 865, 95, 914, 920, 929, 930, 938 through 39, 941, 942, 973. I could go on. It's calling for violence against those who do not believe. It's calling for, for example, 
if I just read uh, one of them here, it says, fighting Quran 2, 216. Fighting is prescribed for you. And you dislike it. But it is possible that you dislike a thing which is good for you. And that you love a thing which is bad for you. But Allah knoweth, and you know not. <laughs> I, I'm just reading the Quran. Yep. We don't hate any religion. We love Christ. We let Christ deal with that. But there is a place you can call home if you want love, if you want peace. And that is Jesus. You can call for him. And he has a place for you. And it's here with Christ. Hmm. All you have to do is say these words. Father, I know that you are the way. I know that you died on the cross. You were buried. And you were resurrected so that I may have eternal life. I accept that. And I want that. Help me and guide me. I give my life to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that prayer, you are now here as a family member. You no longer have to live in any place that calls you that you don't know what you're talking about unless you are fighting as it's prescribed for you. We know also from the Hadith, that we know that this verse was narrated at a time that Muhammad was actually trying to motivate his people into raiding merchant caravans for loot. Just that one verse. I could go on. Like I said, there's all these verses in there that are calling for violence. List of attacks. The last 30 days, there's been a list of attacks. During this time period, in the last 30 days, there were 150 Islamic attacks in 26 countries in which 1,109 people were killed and 2,953 people are injured in the last 30 days. If we look at 2016 so far, there's been 493 Islamic attacks in 39 countries, which 5,100 people have been killed and 6,800 injured. If we look at 2015, in 2015, there were 2,860 Islamic attacks in 53 countries where 27,596 people were killed, 26,145 were injured. In 2014, 3,001 Islamic attacks in 55 countries and 32,863 people were killed. 27,522 were injured. These are numbers from Religion of Peace, thereligionofpeace.com, thereligionofpeace.com, the religionofpeace.com. It's a site that gathers a lot of statistics. But you are a human. You are not your, you are not your religion. You are a human being. And you get to choose. You get to choose if you think you're living in a religion of peace. Study your own Quran. Study your own word. And then study the, the New Testament of the Bible. And study what Christ has done for you on your behalf. Yes, that's why Muslims all over the world right now, Albert, they're having dreams and visions, and Jesus is actually visiting them. I'm sure you've read about that. Yep. Yeah. What a blessing to know that God loves everyone. He loves everyone of every religion all around the world. He's calling you home right now. He's seeking for you to come. He's seeking for you to come home. You have a home. And if you don't know what church to go to, you can join us at saintswithoutwalls.com on Sunday. Saintswithoutwalls.com. And if you can't make the time of 10 a.m. Central United States time, it's okay. We have archived services there, and you can listen to it at your own free will and at your own time. But we implore you, time is short. 
Time is short. Accept the love of Jesus Christ and the love of the Father of the universe who wants you to come home because time is short. Accept him and come on home. For I'm telling you right now, he loves you. He cares about you in every way. He knows that you are special because he sent his own son to die for you. He sent his own son to lay his life on the cross for you. And Albert, I, I got to tell you what a blessing it is to have you as my partner in this. Help me, brother. Share the word, the holy word of God, and your wisdom that God has given you has been absolutely wonderful for God News Network and all the people listening out here. And I've heard comments on how people love you. And I just want you to know that. And uh, we're just getting started. The saints truly are rising. For those of you who want to tune in, it's God News Network, godnewsnetwork.com. You can go to our Facebook. Uh, We have a Facebook about God News Network. We have Twitter, and we also have YouTube. You can go to any one of those. Also, Saints Without Walls. The way you get to the YouTube is youtube.com forward slash God News Network, youtube.com forward slash Saints Without Walls. You can go there. And you have a church. The radio, we get a little deeper. We we dive in a little bit here. We make a little controversy going on here because you know what? We are not ashamed of the gospel. But we want to thank you again. May you guys have a blessed resurrection day. And may God always remember you as I know you now will never forget. Have a blessed day.